So, hi, uh, Mr. Vint. I'm so glad that I got the chance to meet you today. So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Alda bin Meheri. I'm eight years old. I'm from the United Arab Emirates. And I have a business, online business, called Rainbow Chimney, and it focuses on books and education aids, especially for people of determination and autistic children. So, uh, Aldabi, this is such a pleasure to meet you, and I'm quite excited to have this interview because you're such an enterprising young woman. I'm looking forward to this conversation very much. Thank you. So, I have a few questions to ask you. So, can we begin? Yes, we can. Okay. So, my first question is, how did you invent the internet and what did you expect that the internet will be today? So, uh, actually, this was less a question of invention uh, than a matter of being challenged by the American Defense Department to figure out how to get multiple networks of uh, packet switch networks to interconnect with each other and allow every computer on all of the networks to talk to each other, no matter what network they were on. The motivation for that was uh, to use computers for what's called command and control. How do I manage my resources using computers to help? So my uh, colleague, Robert Kahn, and I started working on this in 1973 as a research project uh, in support of the Defense Department. Uh, but we used the system uh, while we were inventing it effectively. And so we had a collection of other people who uh, were making use of this system uh, in order to further develop it. And one of the tools that was the most popular was called electronic mail which had been invented in an earlier experiment called the ARPANET, which is a single network to connect multiple computers together. So even though the original motivation was related to military command and control, the civilian sector research uh, sector was using it in order to further develop it. And we discovered it had civilian applications as well. Email being among the most popular, remote access to computers and other very popular um, application and today that's reflected in our mobiles for example with apps that are on the mobiles or apps that are on your laptop so even though this was 50 years ago we were seeing you know glimpses of what the network might be like if it were in use by the general public and of course by 1989 or 1990 we started to see commercial uh, use of the internet uh, spreading and then in 1991 uh, sir tim berners lee developed the World Wide Web, which is an application that sits on top of the basic internet system. And of course, today you and I are using the World Wide Web just as we are right this moment, transmitting video back and forth at speed. 50 years ago, of course, uh, we didn't have the same kind of capacity that we have today, but we could see little glimpses of what it might be like. And of course, I'm quite excited now here in 2023 to see all of the amazing applications of the internet. And I might just uh, mention to you that uh, way back in 1998, several of us got together and uh, decided that we should be developing an interplanetary internet in order to support manned and robotic space exploration. And of course, now 25 years later in 2023, we're returning to the moon. Uh, we can begin to see commercialization of space. And we know that we're going to need a communication system spanning the solar system over the course of the remaining decades of this century. You're going to see that all the way likely to the 21st century, which is pretty exciting, uh, or 22nd century. I won't see that, but you will. That's why I wish I was about eight years old, so I could see that too. I'll just have to speculate about it. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. So let's go on to the second one. And it is, I started a publishing house and bookstore company because I was tired of my cousins playing with the electronic and devices. Does the internet help or harm books? So that's a really good question. And uh, some people see the internet as a very distracting place, that just as you observe your, uh, your cousins and friends uh, using their mobiles. 
However, uh, I'm a huge book fan. You don't see that in this room in, in my office, but I have lots of books just like you do, I can see in the background. Um, and so I'm a huge fan of books. I'm also a huge fan of books that are available online because uh, then if you're traveling, you don't have to carry heavy books with you. you just have your laptop or your pad or your mobile, uh, which could have a thousand books in it uh, to let you read. So I often end up buying both hard copy and uh, and the electronic copy to uh, to use in both ways. And of course, the hard copy versions, uh, you can have the signature of the author. And I suppose you've probably signed a few books, uh, signed your name and autographed a few books for people, which is kind of cool. So I see the Internet as a way of discovering books uh, at Google. We have uh, a Google. Um, a search capability that lets you find books and even to figure out which libraries they're in in case you want to go to the library to borrow the book. Uh, of course, you also have the option of finding it uh, online to purchase. So I think the internet actually helps people uh, find books and to use them, uh, even though it's also a place where you could get distracted. Well, I definitely agree with that because even I read online books when I'm traveling. So like last month I traveled and I was I was always with it in the night like I wouldn't sleep without reading a book I can I miss my books <laughs> I know I, I never go to sleep without reading at least a chapter or two of a book I often fall asleep with my laptop right on the lap and my wife has to go and put it away for me So Let's continue, and that was a great answer. So the third one is, what is your favorite subject in school? And what is your advice for me to focus to become su successful? You seem to have already figured out how to be successful, so I'm not sure you need any advice from me. My favorite uh, subject at school was mathematics. Uh, I also fell in love with chemistry, and when I was younger, we used to blow things up. Um, I mean, we didn't hurt anybody, and we didn't damage property. We were just making, you know, hyperbolic uh, volcanoes and things out of plaster of Paris. So math for me was a very important subject, and eventually that morphed into computer science, and so my PhD is in computer science. Google really believes in education just like you do. And we believe that that's the root of all uh, capacity. If you're educated, you've learned how to do things. And that means you can work. So you want to learn how to, uh, to do things, in my case, how to write programs, but in other cases, how to manage a business, just like you have. But going to school lets you do that. And by the way, it isn't just topics that are important for work. Knowing something about history Knowing something about art, knowing something about philosophy uh, is equally important because it orients you in the culture in which you live. And the internet can help with that. And so Google tries to help too with our Google search engine to allow you to find things out. So we're big fans of education. We invest heavily in it. We spent something like $200 billion in loans for businesses to get started. And we've also offered businesses free ads like 340 million dollars worth of advertising to become visible and that's something important to you too because you want your company to be visible so other people will buy the books that it uh, prints so thank you for that answer so are we ready to go to the fourth question well the fourth question is is the internet something safe for my age? I think I know. Well, it's a really interesting question because for you, uh, you're so smart uh, that I think you have a good sense of the risk factors of being online. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people don't. Uh, young people and older people often aren't aware of the fact that being online is not necessarily always a safe place. And so you have to be aware of the risk factors, just like when you walk across the street, you remember to look both ways in case there might be a car coming. So the Internet needs the moral equivalent of an Internet driver's license. So you have to learn how to be safe online. Uh, when people send you emails saying, send money, I'm in, you know, I'm in trouble, you have to look carefully at that. 
Now, you already know this term, probably, critical thinking. This is basically asking questions about the information that you've been presented with, either email or a Google search or something else, and asking, where did this information come from? Is there any corroborating evidence for assertions and claims that are being made? Uh, are, they, are they trying to convince me of something that I shouldn't be convinced of? So uh, for people like you and others, uh, it's important to keep the critical thinking going up here in the wetware. Google also tries very hard to uh, filter content uh, when you're doing Google searches uh, and the like in order to keep you safe. It takes care of filtering out spam, email, and things of that sort. But we can't do 100% of the job. That means the rest of it has to be done by people like you. So let me add uh, one more thing about internet. Remember, the parents are, they are, are a part of the internet environment too. They're there with you, they're there to help. And we want, want to help parents uh, manage their uh, children's access to the internet. So we have tools that allow for monitoring and some uh, restrictions and constraints we have offerings that are intended to be uh, taken uh, up by uh, younger people. So uh, we know the parents are with us as well. So thank you. And my final last question is, how does the internet help people of determination? And what can someone my age do to help? So uh, I will uh, understand this question as uh, asking about people with disabilities. You refer to them as people with determination. We refer to them here in the States as people with disabilities. I'm one of them. I have hearing aids, and I've been wearing them for over 60 years now. My wife has two cochlear implants. She was born uh, with normal hearing but lost her hearing when she was three years old. So we have uh, employees at Google, and we have many friends who have disabilities. And we see the internet as a tool for helping them enable uh, their lives. For example, uh, right this moment, I am watching captions coming up on the screen that help me understand what you're saying in case I miss uh, hearing it. And that's all done by the magic of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Lots of other things are possible using computers, which, uh, which can enable people with disabilities to overcome uh, some of the challenges that they have. For example, if you're blind, uh, you can't read text of messages, but the system, the computer can read the text to you as, if you can hear it. So uh, we see these technologies as a way of uh, amplifying people's ability to overcome some of the challenges that they might experience. You might have a physical disability uh, and not be able to type, for example, but if, if you can speak, we can actually capture the text for you and you can write a letter by speaking to the computer in the same way that the computer can speak back to you if you can't see. So I see the internet as a remarkable tool for uh, helping people overcome their disabilities and to make that determination worthwhile. So it was a pleasure meeting you today and I'm so glad that you could answer all my questions. And thank you so much and for what you've done for the world. Well, thank you, Aldabi. This was such a pleasure to chat with you. I hope we'll meet each other face to face someday. I've been in the UAE before, but we didn't meet. So perhaps on another visit, we'll have a chance to meet face to face. But meanwhile, this was a wonderful discussion and I wish you very, very well with the Rainbow Chimney publishing company. Thank you so much now for your time.